There we go. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night. It is about 10.09 p.m. 10.09 p.m. That's California time here on the 26th of February, 2025. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Shows a little small earthquake across California. Uh, also, uh, well, a bunch of movement out across the uh, Maluka Sea area. I uh, got a question here earlier in the day today about earthquake activity compared to last year. So I want to do this right off the bat here. Okay, we'll take a look here at 4.5 and above for the magnitudes across the entire world this year compared to this time last year. And we'll take a look here at the magnitude. So we got uh, 1,120 earthquakes of magnitude 4.5 and above since uh, the 1st of January. And the largest so far this year, the 7.6 there outside of the uh, uh, Cayman Islands area. An interesting area to have the largest quake of the year, right? Uh, not too often do we see large scale events out there, but the Caribbean plate has been underneath quite a bit of strain recently. So two 7.0s so far, at least 7.0 and above for this year. So compared to this time last year for 2024, well, the uh, earthquake magnitude count a little bit lower. So we're looking at uh, maybe about 30 earthquakes more so far this year, 4.5 and above. Last year, the largest earthquake at this time was a 7.5 there on the uh, uh, western coast here of Japan with two seven-pointers. So we're kind of on cue, right, in terms of the multitude of counts out here. This is the average interval or average earthquakes per year across anywhere on the planet. On average, we normally see a, at least a one, one 8.0 earthquake. Our last one was back in 2001. So, you know me, I've been chatting about that for a little bit. Uh, it's coming up here soon, I feel. But, of course, the longer we don't see an 8-pointer, I think the likelihood of a 9-pointer comes into play. Uh, 15 earthquakes of magnitude 7.0 to 7.9 on any given year. So, we're at 2 this year, and we were at 2 this time last year. So, um, you know, nothing of abnormal activity in terms of escalated events. Uh, so far, uh, Northern California, four pointer striking off the coast here of uh, Northern California. Uh, that got downgraded here to a 3.8. Of course, Cascadia subduction zone has been can uh, quite amplified out here as uh, far as the trimmer counts go. So let's go ahead and see what we got for the trimmer count tonight across the Cascadia subduction zone. So we still got some movement down here across the southern end. 100 epicenters, not earthquakes, but trimmer, not volcanic trimmer, but uh, slow slip events here across the subduction zone of the Cascadia. So that could be why we're seeing continued amplification of earthquakes out there in that region of Northern California. A couple of smaller earthquakes there outside of Mount Rainier, but overall nothing major going on. One earthquake outside of Concord, a 1.9. For Southern California, been a little spotty out there. Uh, the latest earthquake above the 2.5 level, 2.9 out across the uh, uh, Bodie area of California. Isn't that a ghost town out there, I think, outside of Mono Lake? Uh, but overall, no major swarms, no unusual activity to note of. California does go through these elevated phases here of increasing earthquake movements followed by uh, quiet periods. But uh, I feel, though, during elevated movement times that we have the, uh, uh, the more likelihood of seeing a larger event. Yellowstone National Park, one earthquake outside of the, uh, looks like the Hebgen Lake area. Uh, these guys up there across the um, uh, Yellowstone seismograph stations, they're still way behind here. I don't know why, but... Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just, if you go here, this is a current date, the 26th, obviously. But if you look at any given map out here, uh, local time here, 10 o'clock, 1030 mountain time early this morning. So for whatever reason, these are about 12 hours behind 
to the T. So uh, not, I, I don't know what's going on with it. I'll have to look into it a little bit more. But uh, no earthquake activity showing up there. But it's it's a little odd to see uh, the 12 hour delay. Uh, earthquake activity outside of Midland. Well, we all know what's up there north of Midland. Uh, I don't think I have to tell you guys. There's a massive amount of oil fields out there across the Permian Basin region of Texas. We're talking about uh, hundreds and thousands of oil fields. And these are not, you know, these, these water pools out here. Those are not swimming pools for the hardworking oil folks to jump into after work, right? After working those, I, I think they work 12, 16-hour long days out there. That's some hard work. Some good money, you know, for uh, drilling the liquid gold out there in the uh, western areas of Texas. But I tell you what, earthquakes are the result of the liquid gold extraction, so to speak. And uh, some of those earthquakes can get up in the uh, five range or so. But for now, just a couple twos and occasional three. But watch for those five pointers. They can definitely stir up out there. Um, nothing major across the eastern portion of the country. As noted there on the USGS map, uh, South America area getting a handful of earthquakes here today. A bunch of fours stirring up along the, the uh, Peru Chile Trench. Nothing major, but uh, it is in an area that uh, can see some major earthquake activity, but nothing of spectacular movement for now. Out here across the Antarctica and the Nazca Plate Boundary, this is a spreading seafloor uh, center, maybe a fracture zone here. Uh, 5.1 earlier today. New Zealand, a couple earthquakes across North Island. Nothing big happening. I mean, it's just typical earthquake activity down there for now. Lots of movement there across the Indonesia Islands area into the Java Trench. But, uh, you know, it's uh, they had a six-pointer out there uh, yesterday. There's a handful of aftershocks out here. Also, um movement outside of that six pointer uh, a lot of earthquake activity happening five pointer 4.1 4.4 outside of that main zone indicating some pressure out here across the area so can't really consider these aftershocks it's just a pressurization event taking place here across the area of the maluka sea uh, the japan area watching the nankai trough pretty closely as uh, far as any subsequent movement goes, there was a uh, 3.8 north here of the uh, Japan area. That looks like it's uh, maybe off where that seven-pointer struck last year. Nankai Trough, earthquake activity there. Um, well, we, we had that super deep earthquake, that 5.8, right? 245 miles deep into that subduction zone. That's a major area here that's very capable of producing guess what guys guess guess what's going to happen here one day soon a mega quake right that's that's in the uh future here look at that land drop off from the from the uh japan area that is a scary sight to have all that land where people live a massive subduction zone just right there so the subsequent tsunami is going to be devastating to that area but it hasn't it, it's not like it hasn't happened before it's happened repeatedly in the past and we're coming up on a time frame there, but we'll probably see that happen again. That 5.8, just a key indicator of the strain building up in that region. Uh, taking a look here across the rest of the area. 5.3 east area, eastern area here of the Himalayas, east of the 7-pointer that struck here earlier this year. Out there in the Bend region, it looks like a little 5.3. Uh, the Santorini area, uh, well, generally quite active out here across this region today. But let's go ahead and check out the Santorini area. This is Santorini, Greece. A couple earthquakes out there, as noted on the uh, recorded seismograph station. We'll go ahead and check out the um, the latest data here from the raspberryshake.org site. Showing 563 earthquakes here in the last week. Numbers are dropping off, that's for sure. But uh, the latest quake shows a, uh, well, it looks to be a 2.2. Quite a few smaller quakes out there is noted. Nothing big happening for now. 
but we're still seeing consistent earthquake activity out there. So this has not died down or dropped off uh, in any fashion in, in terms of, you know, complete quietness. 4.5 out here across Italy. Someone mentioned well, what's going on across the uh, uh, Campi Legre fields, the volcanic fields. Well, uh, not a whole lot. That's why I haven't really been mentioning it. Outside of Naples area, uh, it's pretty quiet. Last 24 hours, last 48 hours, a couple earthquakes out there last week, but it's just a common feature out there. It comes and goes. The land rises. The land subsides. Earthquakes come. Earthquakes go. That's been happening for, I don't know, a couple thousands of years or more. So nothing of abnormal activity out there. Uh, that's why I haven't covered it recently because it's just quiet. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's about it, folks. Let me check Hawaii real quick. I know we started up episode number, what is it, number 11 now, I think, in terms of the eruption status. Let's see if we've come. <laughs> already answered my question there. Paused at 7.06 a.m.? Really? Already? That's a short-lived eruption. Just a little spitter-spatter of huge uh, fountaining there of the uh, lava from Kilauea Volcano on that little crater area. It's been, man, it's been repetitive in terms of the, uh, you know, the, the, the continuation. This, this type of event right here. If you got the money and if you got a chance to fly out there uh, to videotape this, it, it's almost predictable, this type of eruption. And most of the time, you can't catch an eruption there on a predictable type of event. But Kilauea Volcano, the last 11 events out, 11 events have been almost predictable here to the T. So here's our last run up. There's the pause in number 10. Going up, that's inflation. Here's our most recent eruption there uh, um, today or yesterday. Yesterday, I think. That lasted for a very short amount of time period. But look at the amount of deflation going on there. That was a huge volume of magma that got depleted. Now, guess what? We're going back up. So here in about uh, four days or so, you'll probably be able to catch another eruption out there. Someone buy me a plane ticket and a, a, a tour guide. I would I would love to see that. That would be awesome to see. But uh, right now I'm kind of grounded out here. Uh, let's see what else we got. Space weather activity, real quick. <clears throat> um, sea flare activity. It looks like across the far side of the sun over here on the western limb. We're left with a. Uh, a whole bunch of quiet conditions out here. So those of you that want space weather activity to dole down, well, you're welcome. It's happening out here. Once this area gets off on the western limb further, we're left with all these very, very weak, degraded sunspots. And I'll probably drop my flare threat right now um, to lower amounts. Right now, these guys are showing 25% chance for an X-flare. That's way over over uh, elevated infler is even elevated as well so i'll drop mine down accordingly just looking at that those uh, magnetogram images there uh, there's not a whole lot folks that's that's the truth uh, as far as uh, aurora activity we do have a couple coronal holes here number 19 18 and another one down south here that have been facing the earth for a number of days they've scooted off towards the western limb a little bit as noted on that satellite imagery or the uh imagery there of the sun um, so here probably it looks like on the 28th 29th we could see a little bit of aurora amplification there in the coming days coming nights uh, nothing major nothing absolutely major at all so pretty quiet um, massive high pressure over here across the western US but that's not going to last long uh, got some more storm systems coming into the California area, as noted, and that includes Southern California. Just a repetitive system 
uh, of Pacific storms headed into the California area. So that's good. I, I'm okay with that. But we also got some severe weather setups here. It looks like um, as we head into early March across Texas and the south, as noted on this uh, GFS model. So just something to watch pretty closely as we get into the early spring time period here with severe weather forming out there across that typical zone. Uh, Tornado Alley, Dixie Alley, yeah, you name it. Those uh, looking quite active here this year. All right, couple spikes there on China Lake. You guys see that? One, two, three, four. Looks like four earthquakes showing up on China Lake. Let's see what's going on down there. Got, looks like a little swarm here, specifically around this area. Here, uh, it's showing one earthquake, but it looks like there's maybe three or four more happening in this area. And, uh,. That uh, weighs over there, well north of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, just kind of in an odd area. Very shallow crustal quakes indicative there of the strain out here across Southern California. You guys see that right there? That's showing up uh, on the uh, seismograph stations. There are a number of them. So keep an eye there on California. It's, you know, we, we keep an eye on it for for quite a while right it, it could happen at any given time we just gotta gotta be prepared out here a couple earthquakes right off the san andreas fault outside of the, uh, cathedral city area number of uh, ones and twos uh, in the meantime folks have a good night we'll catch you guys out here in the morning sometime for the uh thursday morning update the weekend is coming upon us very quickly have a good night stay safe out there folks we'll catch you guys out here in the morning stay safe Weird, my pop, my uh, button's not working here. Let's try that again, shall we?